So the time has finally come. We are to the coding phase of this Let's Build series called Let's Build a Consultancy Site. And if you're just tuning in, uh, the design we are going to go with is the one I actually continued on from the last video. Alyssa was happy with this look. I think I, I could have you know, broadcasted her response to it, but I think it, the general consensus is it's a little more professional looking than I think this one here. This one's great, it's loud, it's proud, it's bold, but I think this is a little more refined. Um, certain aspects of it I may uh, incorporate and keep consistent, like maybe the photo treatments will be primarily black and white, but there's a subject in the photo, her probably, or even just whatever scenery is behind her as we take more uh, will be color. So it's kind of that contrasting of tones and grayscales. Without further ado, you probably saw me just now uh, pull up this CMS of choice, I think, for this project, which is going to suit her um, the most, I think. Um, last few series I've done have been WordPress and nothing against WordPress, but I'm looking to go off into something a little more secure, a little less heavy and load times and, you know, just kind of something that I can tailor fit to this specific solution rather than, you know, depend on certain plugins or functionality, not to mention the code base underneath. The more and more I build sites, the more I'm getting into worrying about performance. Um, that's something that should not go on, you know, untouched. It's honestly probably one of the biggest concerns I think today you should have as a designer developer, um, things, uh, I mean, you should not be loading more than, you know, five scripts on a site if you can help it, in my opinion. The same is true for fonts. You only need to have one or two uh, web fonts max. Don't go over that amount. That's just another request. Um, we're getting into the territory where HTTP2 is the norm and a lot of servers, your websites are already using that implementation. So basically, we don't have to worry about minifying so much code and all that stuff but i think it's still a good practice to do that just for the sake of speed performance all those concerns so if you have never heard of kirby it is a flat file cms that's to me some very similar to wordpress but it's i guess less bells and whistles but it's also extremely flexible uh, you don't need all these plugins to do the things you can already pr probably do out of the box um, if you're looking for just a basic setup for a site that you want your client or someone else to edit, uh, you can use this platform for that. Um, it is based in PHP and it uses a front matter language called YAML to create what are known as blueprints, which essentially create like your uh, page structure, your field settings in the background. So if you think about it, we've if you've ever used like advanced custom fields before in WordPress or something, this is a kind of leaner approach to that. Um, it's already like built into the platform instead of having to be appended onto like that is for WordPress. Um, it has support for images, of course. Uh, you can write in Markdown. Um, the actual structure of a, of a project is actually just file based. So, this gets generated automatically as you see here, but the images that the content you use gets created and put in subfolders with numbers that correspond to their specific settings that you make in the in the back end, which I'll show you as we go along. But essentially it's it's very lean, very light. Um, the UI itself you can actually customize too. So the CMS structure here, the the black I I can brand to be a different color. Um, you can add you can tweak quite a bit. You can't go ahead and like create a completely different UI. I mean, you could, but you might lose support for updates as they come and have to update that again and again. So that'd be kind of cumbersome, but that's something to keep in mind. So since our site's fairly simple, it's basically, I'm gonna say five pages max, because I feel like we might host the blog elsewhere. It might be on medium.com. Uh, just to reach a larger audience and kind of have that easy platform to author readily available. And so I think we'll do that with like a subdomain type of scenario that they offer right now. So that eliminates kind of the hurdle of the blog. 
besides that, there are just pages with static content and I think we'll incorporate a contact form of some sort. So that will be something to figure out. Uh, the same with these subscription forms, which might tie into MailChimp. The intended purpose of all of this is for people to, you know, do the funnel effect to visit Alyssa's site, understand who she is, what she does, her process here, and then ultimately get in touch with her so she can maybe find new business that way. So um, that's what we're going to try to, you know, take these designs and translate them to interactive elements. I don't see a ton of interactivity going on in terms of like using a ton of JavaScript or anything like that on this project, but we can do some, you know, kind of advanced CSS animations and, and stuff in terms of things that come into view as you scroll and uh, hover effects and so on and so forth. Getting too long winded here, I might as well dive right in. So to start this project, it's it's quite similar to WordPress and getting set up. Uh, you need to download, of course, the package itself. Uh, you can do that via Git or an actual zip file that you download. I, I for the sake of simplicity, I'll just I'll just do that. Um, there's actually a starter kit, which I'll show you how it looks in a second. Uh, that is generated by default. That kind of shows you the bells and whistles of uh, Kirby. And I should say also, you can try this for free on your local machine, but uh, once you go live, you do need to get your license for it. Um, to me, that's that's okay. It's only for $17 for a personal license, which isn't a big deal. Um, but it that supports updates and the, the maker of this and all the stuff behind it. There's tons of documentation on it, which is great. Uh, I've found myself pretty new to the platform so you'll probably see me kind of struggle to get certain things to work if if that time does come there's a nifty cheat sheet to uh, get started here uh, but i'll link to this stuff in uh, the description and the post that you'll see with this video so um, if you're interested in this framework i just recommend downloading the the package itself installing it and get going with it just tweak things to your fit you know and uh, that's how you basically learn is to kind of break stuff and rebuild it. So I had that folder open and it's called Kirby 2.51, which is the latest according to this um, video. And I'm going to name this just Endless since that's Alyssa's alias. Oh, I need to move it out of this folder. All right. And on my machine, I work out of Dropbox as kind of a versioning double versioning thing i don't know security and then i have a sites directory which is what you see here so i'm going to go ahead and put that in my sites folder which also hooks up to my mamp installation if you are new to mamp it is basically a way to host a website on your local server that's based in mysql and apache um, and i think nginx now which is cool you can change your preferences here and the way I do it, the server now is, you know, there's Nginx, that's cool. Uh, you can change your folder structure here to where that serves from. So here you see mine's from Dropbox and sites. So if that makes sense, it's fairly straightforward to install. Um, I have a ton of sites on my machine. So, and a nifty little view of well, I have to launch it to the right URL. So if you go to localhost 888 by default, that is the root one. And actually before this video, I hate to be long winded, but I did a, a quick, I don't know, run through of the platform just to make sure this is what I really wanted to do. And like WordPress, there's a, an admin area. So if you just type panel behind your site's name, which in this case is Endless Kirby. It will take you to the screen, see how I customized that top bar just for grins. It's pretty plain Jane, but that's kind of nice. And you can change certain site options. I added a few plugins, which we'll get into. And from here you can create pages. Here's the, the blog is, is the example blog. Um, and the starter kit is here by default and underneath the blog 
page itself, you can create additional pages, which in my mind, I always think they're called posts. So that's something to get used to, but you can control the feed on the blog, the actual blog post itself looks like something like this. And all these fields you can f configure again on the cheat sheet, there's a field type. Let me see if I can find it real quick, but essentially it just tells you what, what fields, yeah, here they are, all these checkbox, checkboxes, telephone number, text, text area, a uh, cool one called structure, which is kind of like a repeatable field um, and a bunch more. So we'll get into those. I don't think we'll make use of all of them because we really probably won't need to, but it will be cool to do just to pimp this thing out. But as you can see, it's pretty basic. Um, adding images work in such a way as like, um, well, this page doesn't support it. You can turn it off if you want to. The page underneath it does though. So files is, is that you can add pretty much any type of file type um, and then go ahead and, and add it that way. And then there's an image viewer, which is nifty. I think you can view all your files that way, upload a new one. It's pretty nice. It's about all you need really. And to me, it's, it's so much lighter and quicker than for WordPress so far that I'm, I'm really digging it. If you can get over the fact that there's not like all this UI to contend with, which is nice actually. So there's a little sample. So I put that in my sites folder. I will do localhost 8888. And here you'll see all these sites. I messed with the styling. You probably won't see the styling on yours, but maybe I'll do a video on that. So we call this endless. I got a few there. <laughs> So here's, here's the tester theme and essentially it's like a portfolio, I would say, and it's pretty neat. You can, you can see the feed of certain projects, go to the project page, see another feed. This is kind of just a grid that they have in place. You could click to, to the single project navigate. So it can pretty much do what any other CMS can do, if not more. So I don't think you should limit your knowledge of it immediately like don't judge a book by its cover i would say but uh the the part that i love about this for, uh cms is that it's file based there is no database and that is awesome for security uh, you won't have to deal with people trying to inject shit into your site which is dumb when dealing with wordpress so anyways this is what it looks like with your sites installed if you do go the panel route i think it has an initial install screen on the first visit. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a user. I, my alias is just a lever, it's just Andy Leverance. Long story, I'll leave it at that. Um, they want you to use this crazy password, I'm not gonna do that, just for my sanity's sake. And I'll do agency, and I speak English. Okay, so here's the default. Uh, you can go ahead and edit your account. I'll go ahead and do that. And admin. And if you want to upload a profile picture, you can do that too. Okay, cool. So our users created, you can create more here too, if you want. And at this point, I mean, our site's working, everything's great, but we obviously want to change a lot of things about it. And that's initially getting the, you know, Kirby installed. It's really simple. You throw it in your site folder and then um, serve it up to localhost and then go to your URL. And from there on, you can develop it in this mode. Uh, in the next few videos, I'll show you how you would maybe approach optimizing the theme for development. And I think in the next part, I'll go ahead and get our, our actual code base set up for work and styling and stuff like that. So we'll probably make use of some toolings like Gulp for um, running SAS, which I like to use. So if you're new to SAS, you hopefully you get to learn it in this video. So I will see you in the next one.